Hello guys, uh, today we're going to do a quick UDK tutorial on how to create keys or how to simulate keys within UDK. So um, keys can be used for various things. I'm going to show you how to activate a matinee sequence using them. Uh, okay, so let's begin. The first thing we're going to need is static meshes to represent keys. So we go into the content browser and we limit the search to static meshes. And I'm just going to search for pickups because I know that they look good as keys. And uh, I have a personal preference towards this one. You can use any static mesh, I just prefer this one. I'm just going to drag this in and then I'm going to minimize the content browser as I don't need it again for a minute. I'm just going to drag this up above the level so we can see it. Now the first thing you're going to want to do with this static mesh is to right click on it and come down here to convert and convert it to a mover. It uh, just saves time later on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make two copies of this. So quickly hold Alt and drag it across to make a direct copy. And another one just there. Very good. Now, you're going to want to make both of these copies uh, hidden. Uh, to do that, we press F4 to get into the uh, selected one's properties. And we scroll down to display and we check hidden. Uh, this is because we don't want them to show up uh, when the map is loaded. Uh, just select the other one and hide it also then you can close the properties. Now we want one of these to appear almost ghost-like uh, so you can see through it and it's just like a marker so that if they pick this one up this one will appear and it'll just appear see-through and just slightly transparent. And to do that we need to apply a transparent material to it. So the pl we get the transparent material in the content browser. We just bring back up the content browser here and we uncheck static mesh and we check material and then we clear this search and we search for red. Now I know that there's a red translucent material here. I'm just going to load that. It'll be not it won't be fully loaded right away. We're just going to click here to fully load it. And then with it selected, you want to minimize the content browser again. And then you want to select the key you want to apply it to and you want to press F4 to get into its properties. You want to scroll back up to the top here. And then you want to click on the drop down here dynamic SM actor and then you want to click on the drop down of mesh component and you want to come down here to where it says rendering and into materials you see here it has no materials applied to it at the moment well what you do is you add new item and you click on this little green arrow to use object in selected object in content browser click here and as you can see the red translucent material has been applied to that key or that mesh <coughs> so now we can just close this down because we don't need it anymore and we can also close the content browser as we do not need it anymore either Okay, so the next thing that you should do is add in two triggers. So just right click, add actor, add trigger, and just bring it to roughly the center of your key. Now what you want to do is you're going to want to make that trigger slightly bigger. Uh, just press F4 with it selected to get into the properties, come near trigger, cylinder component, and change that to 80 and 80. That'll make sure that it's uh, a good size that the player won't be able to just walk around it. So then once you have that done, you're just going to close these properties here. And you can just simply click here while holding Alt and drag it across to make a copy of it. Now you have two triggers, direct copies of each other. It's very good. Now the first thing, the next things sorry that we want to do is to open kismet and we want to create a new trigger here a new event using trigger touched and a new event using trigger used now the reason we put in a trigger touched is we want it so that the every time the player touches the trigger we want to play an announcement telling them to pick up the key so to play an play an announcement we right click new action come down here to voice slash announcement play announcement and we just hook that up to trigger touched and we're going to come down into the announcement I'm just gonna type in a quick announcement here press E to pick up okay very good now um, I think what we should have done at the very beginning here is go into the trigger touched uh, come down into its properties into here the sequence event and you're going to want to change this max trigger count to zero so that this can activate a infinite amount of times if they leave it and come back to it it'll play it all again and again and again okay so then in the trigger used we're going to want to click on that and we're going to want to turn off aim to interact because that can sometimes be a bit buggy because they have to actually aim at this symbol and depending if you have it higher or lower it can be quite hard to find 
but if you uncheck aim to interact that problem goes away they can be even facing the opposite direction and still pick up the key <coughs> okay very good so the next thing that we want to do is to add a toggle hidden uh, this is because when this trigger is used we want to hide this key to make it seem as though they've picked up this key to create the illusion that they've picked up this key so to get a toggle hidden we right click in kismet new action come down to toggle and select toggle hidden just going to drag that up a bit and we're going to make it so when the trigger is used we're going to toggle and you want you have to have a target for it so we select the key and we right click and then we create a new object variable using it using this key and then we target it so now when this trigger is activated this will hide now we're quickly going to test that uh, we're just going to minimize kismet now uh, a note that uh, <coughs> something that's uh, worth taking note of is that announcements will not play if you do not have a game mode set so the next thing we want to do is just go into view world properties come down here to game type and set a game mode you can set ut game and ut deathmatch they're fine for now and you can just hit play from here you'll start playing from the player spawned i'm just going to walk over here to the key see we get our announcement there nice and clear and uh, press e and we pick up our key now nothing else happens because we haven't programmed it yet but that's exactly what i wanted to happen okay so we'll go and we'll open kismet again i'm just going to drag it over slightly so you can see so now when this trigger is used it hides this key but also when this trigger is used we want to unhide this key to give the player an an indication of where they want to go with the key now to do that we just right click in the kismet again with the selected with the key selected and we create a new object variable using that one uh, these are interactors now because i converted them to movers at the very beginning now um, what we want to do is we want to target this key as in this key with the same toggle hidden so that when this trigger is used it toggles this one to hidden and it toggles this one to unhidden as it was set to hidden originally okay so we're just going to quickly test that to see if that works look in this direction you, s you see i haven't set collision on them yet i'll do that at the end if i remember so you can see the other one appears good very good okay so we're just going to reopen kismet again now we also want it, uh, this trigger added into kismet so that we can place down our key or again create the illusion that we place down our key now to do that we come into kismet again and we right click and we create a new event using trigger touched and a new event using trigger used the same process as we used to set these two up we're just going to want to go into the trigger use properties and we're going to turn off aim to interact and we're going to want to go into the trigger touch properties and change the max trigger count to zero and uh, a note for these two also is that we want to go into their properties scroll down slightly and you see here we're enable and it's checked we're going to want to uncheck that so they're both disabled at the start so that the player can't just accidentally activate this trigger touched and activate this trigger used in the beginning it's just uh, to make sure that this is the first thing that has to happen okay so what we want to happen is when this trigger is used we want to toggle these two on and we want to toggle this one off so they don't keep getting the announcement from this trigger that they must pick up the key and to do that we add in a toggle block and to get a toggle block we right click new action come down to toggle and add in toggle so now with the toggle added we then connect it up to this trigger used here we are so when this trigger is used we want to toggle the event of trigger used and trigger touched on and we want to toggle this trigger off okay so that's almost ready to go I'm just going to bring this over slightly and bring this one down slightly so that they're a bit more symmetrical now the next thing we're going to need is another toggle hidden over here to toggle this key to hidden as in the translucent one to hidden and to unhide this one the solid one again so we're going to right click new action come down to toggle toggle hidden I'm just gonna attach it to the used of the disabled trigger this trigger here so then when this trigger is activated 
it will target this one it will hide this one here and then we're just going to select this one right click the object variable using and attach it to the target also so it will unhide okay so we're just going to test that very quickly Now the announcement here, I, I haven't added an announcement to the trigger touched on the other one just yet, I'll do that in a moment. I'm just going to come in and press E, come over here, and we're going to press E again, and you see that works perfectly. Now uh, I'm going to open up one that I had finished earlier, and I'm just going to show you a few examples of how it can actually be used. So, file, open, open, don't save. Now this is one that I finished earlier. I added in uh, static meshes here to represent the bases here. And I'm just going to show you a uh, finished Kismet code here. Now you see I did it slightly differently here. You can see that I have another toggle here and another toggle hidden here. But I'll just show you that that actually works without this. Just break this link here. Just attach it to the toggle. So this trigger here is this trigger. Sorry, it's this trigger. Excuse me. So this trigger touched and this trigger used it is representative of this trigger. So when this trigger is used, it comes in and it toggles this mesh to hidden. And then it comes out and it toggles the trigger here on and this trigger on. And it toggles the trigger touched version of this off. And then also it's going to target this to unhide this one, which is the red one we can see here. Now when this trigger here is used, this trigger, it's going to toggle this one on, the solid one, and it's going to toggle the red one, the translucent one, off. And also it's going to activate a matinee door sequence. Now another thing that this will do is it will also come out here and it will toggle off this trigger so they will not keep getting the announcement. Now the announcement that I've added here is just press E to place key. And this toggle is the same as before, it just attaches into this one to turn it off immediately and to turn these two off once this trigger is used. And then there's just a standard matinee sequence to apply to that door. Uh, there's a previous tutorial on this channel about how to add matinee sequences. Um, I recommend you check it out if you're interested. We're just going to close Kismet now. We're just going to hit play from here. I'm just going to go over and get our announcement, press E to pick up key. Our little red translucent one appears, we come over to it, we press it, the other one appears, and it plays the matinee sequence. Anyway, that's all guys, if you have any questions, please post in the comment section, and please check out more videos on the Online Design Teacher channel. Thanks.